Hey everyone, this is Miss Reese. We are going to be going over uh, the practice test for Unit 4. Um, so I have the Edge Elastic open. I also have a piece of paper where I'm writing my work. I also have Desmos Scientific Calculator that I just Googled to open and my toolkit. So these are all the things you'll want to have in front of you. Um, so we're starting out with ratios and we're putting these ratios into simplified form. So on the first question here, we are comparing um, chocolate donuts to crumb donuts. So we would want to make sure we know how many chocolate we have. So that would be 100. And we would also want to make sure we knew how many crumb donuts we have, and that would be 80. And then we would just be simplifying this or putting this into simplest form. So if you put 100 over 80, that's not going to be a fully correct answer. You will get maybe some credit for that, but not full credit. So we want to make sure we know how to simplify that. So to simplify that, we're going to go to our Desmos Scientific Calculator, and we're going to put 100, and then my little division symbol here, and then 80. And we want to leave it as a fraction, so we're going to simplify it to 5 fourths. And to make it a fraction, we can do this here, and we've got 5 fourths. Whoops, 5 fourths. All right. In our second question, okay, let me close these. Um, in our second question, we have crumb donuts to old-fashioned donuts. So here we have five fours. So for the crumb donuts, um, that's going to be 80. To the old-fashioned, that's going to be 120. So if we simplify that, 80 over 120, again, I would just open up my Desmos Scientific Calculator. We've got 80 divided by 120, and that's going to simplify to two-thirds. So two, fraction, three. Okay. And in my last question, we need old-fashioned to the total number of donuts. So we are actually going to need to add all of those values together. Um, so old-fashioned donuts, we've got 120 for that. And then when we add 100, 120, and 80, that's going to be a combined total of 300. So we have 120 over 300. We're going to simplify that using our scientific calculator, 120 over 300. And that should simplify to two-fifths. And on my um, keyboard, I can also just do two and then the slash symbol to show a fraction. Okay. And we can move on to our next question. Um, for the next one here, I recommend potentially using um, this Desmos Scientific Calculator as well. So we want to know if these ratios are proportional. Okay, so I've got 20 divided by 30, and I'm just going to open up a new line so that I can kind of put these all together. We've got 13.5, and we're dividing that by 9. So we want to know if those equal the same value. So you're noticing here, they are not the same decimal ratio. Um, I can convert them into fractions if we want, and they're actually flipped of each other. So these are not uh, proportional. So I'm going to say not um, and our next question we have here 260. We're dividing that with 455. And we're comparing that with 176 and 308. Um, it looks like here we have the same decimal value. You can also check if you want them in fraction form too. Um, these would be, they are. So the work that you might want to show on your paper is the simplification for both of them, the decimal value of that simplification, or you can show the fraction simplification. Oh, they both equal four-thirds. So something I might write down for question two. Um, you could say like the first question A, right? We had um, one of them simplified to two-thirds, and that does not equal the other simplification, which is three over two. Um, question B, we could say, oh, yes, they both simplified to, what did I say they simplified to? They both simplified to four-sevenths. Okay, so this is the work that you can show on your paper to um, justify your answers. Um, on the next one, we have two divided by one. Well, that's going to be two. We also have 12 divided by six. That's going to be two. Those are proportional. And for this last one here, I'm going to write this as 2x over 4x. And if I were to simplify that, the x divided by x, that simplifies to 1. And 2 fourths simplifies to a half. And so does 3 over 6. That simplifies to 1 half as well. This should be 
simplifying that to one, there we go. So those are proportional as well. So we'll say are proportional. Okay. On our next question, we have the ratio of the angles of a triangle. So this is an extended ratio problem. Um, you might want to look back onto your toolkit example here. We have a problem similar where there are three ratios for the side lengths of a, tri a triangle in terms of the perimeter. Um, but now what we're looking at are the three ratios in terms of the angles. And we're going to put this in terms of y. So our ratio is going to be 2y. So I'm just going to use my keyboard to type this. 2y plus uh, 3y plus 7y equals, and in the triangle we know there's 180 degrees. So this is our equation that we're going to use. Let's write that down here for question three. So we've got 2y plus 3y plus 7y equal to 180. I'm going to just put this over here a little bit. All right, let's move farther into this question. Um, what we need to do now is we're going to go ahead and combine all of our like terms here. So 2 plus 3, that's 5, plus 7 is 12y is equal to 180. If I divide by 12 on both sides, 180 divided by 12, um, we're going to get y is 15. Okay, so what we're looking for um, are the measure of the smallest angle, the measure of the second smallest angle, and the measure of the large, largest angle. So really, now we need to take 2 and multiply it to 15. We're going to take 3, multiply by y, which is 15, and we're going to take 7 and multiply by y, which is 15. So really, y was that common, uh, greatest common factor of all of these numbers. So we're going to get an angle of 30, 45 degrees, and we're getting 105 degrees. So really what you were thinking of in terms of the problem, this ratio started out as 30 to 45 to 105 for the angles, which good, all add up to 180, right? And then when I simplify 30, 45, and 105, it simplifies to 2, the 3 to 7. So we, our smallest angle, we said, was 30. Our second smallest angle, 45. And our largest angle, 105. Um, here we just have a proportion. So question, oh, question 5. I just did 3 and 4. This was question 4 here. So for question 5, um, with our cross products, so we've got 6 over 2 equals x over 8. I go ahead and just set up a cross product for that. So that's going to leave us with 2x equaling 6 times 8 here. There we go. Uh, so that's going to give us 2x, which is equal to 6 times 8, 48, divided by 2, and x is 12. On the next one here, question six, the same thing, we're going to do a cross product. So if we write out our problem here, it doesn't matter the order that we put the cross products in, but generally if I have one term and it's being multiplied to two things, I like to put that one term first. So P minus four, and then that's equal to two times 12, which can be also placed in in any order, 2 times 12. Um, so next, I could go ahead and distribute 24 to p and 24 to negative 4. That's going to be 24p, 24 times negative 4. Let's get out our calculator. Twenty-four times four. 96, and if it's a negative, it'll be negative 96. So minus 96 equals 24. Keep uh, solving from here. We can add 96 to both sides. 24p, um, and that's going to be 120. We'll divide by 24 on both sides. So 120 divided by 24. That's going to be 5. P equals 5. Okay, 
think we got one more cross product problem here. So let's put number seven. We've got 10 over P plus two, and we're gonna set that equal to four thirds. So again, we'll do our cross products multiplication. We're gonna multiply four with P plus two, and then we're gonna set that equal to three times 10. All right, so when we distribute four times P, that's gonna be four P, four times two, that's gonna be four P plus eight equaling 30. We can subtract 8 on both sides. 4p equals 22. And we'll divide by 4. So 22 fourths, if we simplify that, should be 11 over 2. And since this doesn't specify what type of format to place our answer, we can put 11 over 2. And we can also put uh, 5 halves, 5 and a half. So if I did 22 divided by 4 here, it's going to show 5.5. Um, it's going to show 11 over 2. So either way you format the answer, no problem. All right, and one last cross product setup. So we've got x plus 6. That's going to be over x. Let's set that equal to 10 7. So we'll circle our cross products. We've got 10 multiplied with x, that is 10x. And then we've got seven, that's gonna multiply 2x plus six. We'll go ahead and distribute here. So we're left with 10x is equal to seven x plus 42. And then from here, we need to bring all of our x's to one side so we can subtract a seven x. And that would leave us with 3x equals 42. And divide by 3, divide by 3x is 12. All right, we now have the coordinate points. Um, it's dilated from the origin with a stretch factor of 3, and we're going to write the new coordinates. So looking back on our toolkit for dilations, Anytime we're dilating something around the origin, uh, we basically just take that scale factor value and multiply it with each coordinate. Okay, so for coordinate A, I'm going to multiply 0 with 3, so that's going to be 0. And I'm going to multiply a negative 4 times 3, that's going to be negative 12. Um, here we're going to multiply negative 3 with 3, so that's going to be negative 9, and we're going to multiply a nine with three, so it's gonna be 27. And our last coordinate here, we have a negative eight we're multiplying by three, that'll be negative 24. And we have a six that we're multiplying by three, that'll be 18. And looking at our notes on scale factor, enlargement or reduction. Now, if our scale factor is greater than one, that's an enlargement, if our scale factor is some value greater than zero but less than one, it's going to be a reduction. Well, three-fourths, that is 0.75, and that is between zero and one. So this is a reduction. Um, here we can use the triangle sum theorem to find some of our missing angles. So on question 11, um, the angles that I know that match up with each other in the diagram if I'm looking for angle U, that is the middle letter here, angle U. R is the middle letter as well. So I know that angle R is congruent to angle U. And if I want to find angle R on the triangle on the left, I need to take 180, and I need to subtract 112, and I need to subtract 29. That will give me the measure of angle R, which should then be equal to angle U. So 180, let's take 180 minus 112 minus 29. And we've got 39. So that means angle U is also 39. They're in the same relative position, R and U, middle letters. Um, here we're basing our statement on the little arc markings that um, show the angles are equal. So if I'm starting with Y, Y is the first letter. 
with it, which has two marks in it, two arc markings. B is the first letter that has two arc markings. So we start with B. And then we're going to Z next. Z is the middle letter. Z has three marks on it. C has three marks on it. And then a Y. Let's see. We're ending with X, rather. X has one mark on it, and A has one mark on it. So B, C, A. So based on the number of markings in each of the angles, or which angles are congruent, you're going to make your um, similarity statement based off of that. Um, here, these triangles, well, since we only know one side in that larger triangle, we can't use side, side, side to prove that they're similar. We also can't use side, angle, side, because we only know one side that we can compare with. But what we do know is that these angles here are marked equal, angles, angles. So these triangles are similar because they have angles that are the same. So now we're going to be solving for something based off of that. Now, I think it's helpful when drawing out these triangles on your paper, on the scratch paper, so we can set up our ratios. We've got a 4, we've got a 9, and a 7, and in the larger triangle, we've got a 9. And then I'm going to label each of these sides. I think it might be helpful. I'm going to label this side X, and I'm going to label this side Y so that we can kind of highlight them and mark up the, the same sides. So this side 4 matches up with this side 9. And we also know this side 9 matches up with this side x. So let's solve for x first. We're going to ignore the 7. We're going to ignore that other side that we're looking for. So I'm going to set up a ratio. I'm going to do the pink side here over its corresponding pink side, 4 over 9. And I'm going to set that equal to the blue side set up as a ratio, 9 and x. And why I like to put these arrows here is so that I'm putting the numbers in the same order for the next ratio. So that I know, oh, 9 needs to go in the numerator and x needs to go in the denominator. 4 to 9, 9 to x should be the, same, the proper ratio set up for that. If we set up a cross product, 9 times 9 is 81. 4 times x is 4x divided by 4 on both sides, divided by 4 on both sides. And that's going to give us x equals, let's figure out what 81 divided by 4 is. And that's the simplest fraction form, or we can put it in our dec decimal format as well. And that's going to be 20.25. So that's actually going to be the longest side. I'm going to put that here, 20.25. Or you can leave it in fraction form. That's also okay. Now let's find our side y, and maybe I'll highlight these sides, whoops, in green. Oh, that's not green. There we go. That's green. That's green. So now our green sides, I'm going to put arrows over those. We've got 7. We've got y. We're going to use our pink sides, 4 over 9. We're going to set that equal to our 7 over y. And I'm putting 7 on top because we're going from the left triangle to the right triangle. And it is okay to, you know, reverse the order that you're going in, but you need to do that for both of them. So we're going to end up with here for y equals 9 times 7, which is 63. You can divide by 4 on both sides. Divide by 4. 63 divided by 4. That's going to be 15.75. Now we want the perimeter. So now we just need to add up all of those sides. So we've got the side on that large triangle already 9. And we've got 20.25. And we've got um, that last side 15.75. So our perimeter altogether is 45. Remember, perimeter is distance around a figure. All right, here, we want to know if these triangles are similar. So remember our triangle similarities. Scroll down here. We've got angle, angle, side, 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 angle, side. So here we have three sets of sides for both triangles. We need to see if those sides um, are proportional. We'll check the smallest sides, the middle sides, the longest sides. So question 15. Uh, my two smallest sides in those sets of triangles. So we know what we're comparing the proper sides with each other. The two smallest sides are going to be our 90 and our 170. 
Um, our middle sides, we could say, are 163 and 306. And our longest sides, 171 and 323. So making sure that you're showing your work on a piece of paper, simplifying each of these, definitely fine to do this on a calculator. Let's try all of them. So we've got 90 divided by 170. Those are the two smallest sides. We've also got 163, and we're dividing that with 306. And our two largest sides, 171, and we're dividing that with 323. Um, so you can see here easily if we put them all into fraction form, two of the fractions are the same, 9 over 7, but that third one is not the same. And even in decimal format, they're pretty close to each other, but they're not identical. This one here is not the same. So these are not similar. All of those should be the same in order for these triangles to be similar. Um, here, remember, anytime we've got some parallel lines, we're looking for corresponding angles to the parallel lines, or we're looking for alternate interiors. Um, so our parallel lines, M to N and H to G, we will have congruent corresponding angles at the base of M, the base of G. So um, let's just draw a little sample of that. So these angles here would be corresponding. They're in the same relative position. These angles here would also be corresponding. And then technically angle L is the same in both angles. It's an overlapped triangle. So we at least have two angles that are the same. These are similar by angle angle. Um, here we have 80 degree angles. Those are the same in both triangles. And then we have some small sides and we have some large sides. So let's check the two smallest sides with each other. The two smallest sides of both triangles would be a 55 and 198. And the two largest sides would be the 75 and the 270. These are the same ratios. So you would want to on your paper say that they both equal 0.27 repeating or they both simplify to 5 18 And they're similar because of those two proportional sides and the angle between them. That is also congruent. It's both 80s. Here we're going to want to use some triangle sum theorem to find a missing angle. So I'll write this one down. Um, let's find angle R. Let's take 180 and we'll subtract 120. Subtract 20. That should be 40 degrees. So angle R is 40. And angle J is 40. So angle R and J are both congruent. And we've also got angle K and angle S are congruent. Angle K and S, that was given, they were 120, and I found out angle R through triangle sum theorem. So these triangles are similar. They have two angles that are the same. Um, here we've got some vertical angles. Anytime you see triangles that create little bow ties, I like to call them bow ties, um, those angles at the center of the bow ties, those are what we call vertical. So now all I need to do is check the ratios. So let's check the two smallest sides. The two smallest sides in both triangles. The two smallest sides would be like 266, that's the smaller side, and 112. The next, uh, the two largest sides then would be 380 and 160. We've got the same ratio. And the angles between them are congruent. So this is side angle side. All right, we're going to check the ratios here. I'm going to do smallest sides of both triangles, and I'll go from the top to the bottom. You can do vice versa as well, which will work. So two smallest would be 54 and 24. Middle sides uh, would be 72 and 32. Oh, same so far. And the two largest sides would be 108 and 48. So I would, in your explanation, say that all of the ratios simplify to 2.25 or that they all simplify to 9 fourths. So these triangles are similar by side, 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 three sets of sides, ratios. Ooh, let's see if I can zoom out a little. Here we go. All right, so we are dilating this from a point on our graph. So I might want to look at an example just as a reminder when we're dilating something. 
Oh, I didn't do this in my classes here. I'll erase that. Uh, so when we're dilating, we'll just do this example here. Um, we're dilating from the point negative or two comma zero. So that's from point H on our graph. So I'm actually going to do this. I haven't used this yet. So if I'm dilating from a point that's um, the center of dilation right here, this is where H prime is going to be located. And I'm going to label all of my new points. Okay. And then essentially what I need to do from this point of dilation is I need to triple its distance to G. So right now, G, this is one diagonal unit. I need to go out one, two more diagonal units. So that distance is three times as long as it originally was. Okay, so that means I went up one to the left one. Triple that would be have been up three, left three. So I've got my new coordinate here. Uh, we'll call that G prime. Oh, and you know what? I don't think it's erasing. It won't erase any of the any of the things that I have on here. So really, you just need that G prime point there. Um, and then for H prime, it's obviously on the center of dilation, so we're not changing that location. And then for F, um, we've got some diagonal units here. I'm going down one and left three. So triple that would be down three and left nine all the way over here. So really what I'm looking for, this will be F prime. I, could, I should have used my, my tool. Um, so really what I'm looking for, I'm going to use my tool for this, and I'm going to put this in maybe a different color. Let's do blue. Is my new, tri or my new triangle shape will be here's H prime to G prime. Here's G prime to F prime. And here's F prime to H prime. There's my new triangle. It is triple in size and it's dilated from that point H prime. All right. Now here, I'm going to actually use a sketch tool for um, showing which sides match up with each other. So we've got PM, which is 35. That is going to match up with PM, first letter, middle letter. All right, so we've got the 35 here, PM. That should match up with TR, the first letter, and middle letter. So I'm going to circle those, highlight them in the same color so I can create a ratio for them. Um, so my ratio for, this is 22, my ratio could be um, 35 over 14, so the two red sides in a ratio are going to equal, uh, maybe I'll do a different color here for this side here, 7x minus 9, that is ML, middle letter, last letter, matches up with TQ, middle letter, last letter, 2x plus 2. So, and again, we can put arrows, we'll go from the left triangle to the right triangle, and I lost my red here. This should go in from the left triangle to the right triangle. So in the same format, in the same order. So here we've got 35 over 14. We're going to set that equal to then the 7x minus 9 over 2x plus 2. We can set up a cross product from here. We've got 14. We're going to multiply that with 7x minus 9. We're going to set that equal to 35, which will then multiply to 2x plus 2. We're going to multiply our uh, distribute here. So 14 times 7. I'm going to actually move my calculator over here so I can look at my work at the same time. All right, so we've got 14 times 7. 98. I also need 14 times 9. This is going to be 98x minus 126. And we're going to do 35 times 2x. That'd be 70x. And 35 times 2, that should be 70. We'll bring all our x's to one side. We can subtract 
a 70x on both sides. That should be 28x minus 126 equals 70. We can also add 126 to both sides. I'll go back to showing off the problem here. 126. That should give us 28x is now equaling uh, 206. And then the last step, just go ahead and divide uh, by, I'm sorry, 196. Divide by 28 on both sides, and we will get x is 7. Um, so we're going to type in two things. Let me go off the scratch pad here. Oh, click that to go off the scratch pad. So first I'm going to set up my ratio. So I'm going to put a fraction for that. So the ratio, what I used to set this up was 35 over 14 equals uh, my second fraction here. 7x minus 9 over 2x plus 2. And then the solution that we got, oh, this was already set up as a fraction. <laughs> Hold on. Thirty-five over fourteen. Let me go out of that and put an equals. Okay, there we go. Okay, seven x minus nine over two x plus two. All right, and we got x equals seven. And we're on our very last question. We'll go to our next one here. And for this one, we are going to draw the overlapping triangles separated. So that's going to be my first step here on this. I'm going to do this on this paper just because it's a little easier on this one. So the first triangle that I'm going to draw out is PTS. And that's going to be a 36 here and a 30. And then the other triangle is PRQ. So it's the entire triangle, the larger one, the overall triangle here, P. QR. And so here we've got 3x plus 13. And from P to Q, we actually need to combine our like terms. So we've got a 36 plus a 2x minus a 6. So I'm going to combine that as 36 uh, minus 6 is 30. So 2x plus 30. So now when I go to set up a ratio, the ratio that I'm going to create, I'm going to do pink side over pink side. So 36 over a 2x plus 2, or 2x plus 30 rather. Then I move out of that and do an equal sign for my next cross, uh, my next fraction here. And then we've got 30 over 3x plus 13. And then we're just going to solve for x. So let's set up 36 over 2x plus 30. And then we're going to equal that to 30 over 3x plus 13. So our cross product here, running out of space, that should give us 30 multiplied by 2x plus 30. And then our other cross product, we've got 36. And we're going to multiply that by 3x plus 13. And so 30 times 2x, that's going to be 60x. 30 times 30, that's going to be 900. 36 times 3 is 108x. And 36 times 13 is 468. Now we can just subtract 60 on both sides. That's going to be simplified out. And we can also then subtract 468 on both sides. And so 900 minus 468, that should be 432. 
and we can set that equal to um, 108 minus 60, which is 48x. And then just divide by 48 on both sides. And x is 9, 9 equals x. So we'll type that in here. And ready to submit.